Alright, time for another DraftPhysics.com video presentation. So, I think I'll do a series of videos. Um, who knows when I'll add additions to it. Basically, uh, going over concepts to which science has paid no attention. Um, they're very interesting phenomenon that they just couldn't care less, frankly. And uh, to their discredit, I would say, um, pointing out how they really don't want to tie up the loose ends in their theories and um, it's sort of made evident by this kind of stuff. So as I have pointed out, it would be uh, interesting. <laughs> yeah, if I don't hit the camera, it'd be interesting. Um, to understand scales and weight in a little deeper than just this, just putting a weight on a scale and saying how much does it weigh. Uh, the interesting question is, how high do I have to drop something to see twice its weight? Because that'll tell you a lot. And, um, you know, how high three times? You know, all of that's interesting. But even more interesting is, is once I have compressed the spring with weight, can I turn it this way? And what is my expectation of it pushing the same object? So I compress it with a weight, and what does that equal in terms of a pressure? in terms of um, a measurable pressure that is being created by the weight sitting on the scale. And I have come to the conclusion, just in doing some crude experiments, that uh, one centimeter is the distance and that it's one mile an hour. So if you want to know something's weight going sideways, you want to measure weights, you just put on a pendulum, swing it at one mile an hour, and it will read its weight without using gravity. So that's the whole real point of the argument, is that gravity really isn't um, anything but another source of momentum. It's just giving things momentum. And so, um, hopefully you can see this. So it's one centimeter will double your weight. So you could drop anything from a centimeter high, and it will register so approximately a centimeter. It could be eight millimeters, could be 12. Um, because I'm obviously measuring it with a crude device because physics hasn't done it for us. Um, they might be able to mathematically figure this number out, but I haven't seen anybody who's bothered to do it. So, uh, and the idea would be is that, uh, you know, the first weight, you know, you could, when you're doubling something's weight, you could think of the 9.8 as being the, the weight of it sitting on the scale. And then you could think of the other weight being the dropping weight the added weight is just the dropping distance. And the dropping distance is the same weight, essentially. So what you've basically done is just separate the two and said, well, half of the weight is just the weight of the object. Half of the weight is the energy you created by allowing it to drop for that tiny distance in gravity. And that tiny distance creates, my calculations say, 0.447 meters per second or one mile an hour. So it falls at one mile an hour. And so theoretically, you could just take any object, so this would be any object, okay, and move it at one mile an hour, and you'll be able to weigh it, okay, horizontally on a scale, on a spring. Because springs do, as Hicks, Hooke's law says, basically, it's there's no springs don't get harder and harder to compress they just sit there and require you to compress them so you have to hold them you know if you already put pressure on you have to hold that pressure but if you want to add extra pressure you don't have to add more energy than the initial energy so it only takes two objects you know to compress the spring twice as much it only takes three objects to compress it three times as much now, if this was a magnet, and you're using repulsive magnets, there's a difference because that's an inverse square law. So you can't use magnets and get an even scale. You have to, you have to uh, adjust the scale to the fact that the magnet's not going to be, like Hooke's law, it's not going to be a proportionality, a uh, direct proportionality, an equality, you could argue. Um, and so you can't just write the numbers the same distance from each other. 10 ounces and 20 ounces and 30 ounces are going to be different because magnets create more repulsion the closer they get to each other. But springs don't. And so there are simple arguments to be made 
Now, conventional physics appears to say, okay, I haven't had anybody directly say it, I mean, a physicist directly say it, I suppose. I think physicist Michael has, but I can't recall any specific circumstance where a physicist said twice the compression of a spring is four times the kinetic energy, that you've stored four units of kinetic energy with twice the compression. Now, logically, it can't make any sense because I can just simply put one mass and one mass on a scale and I put the first mass on I get half the compression I put the second one on I get the second unit of compression and the second unit of compression can't be three units of compression <laughs> can't be worth three units of energy because it's the same exact weight it's the same exact momentum so I'm adding one unit of momentum you could argue one mile an hour the weight at one mile an hour and I add another one a mass at one I should say a mass a mass at one mile an hour so I have two masses going one mile an hour and so one plus one can't equal four it can only equal two so twice the compression of the spring can only be twice as much momentum and it can only push the same object two miles per hour and that's it okay can't make it go four, um, but it certainly won't not make it go two. So if I compress the spring twice as much, I should expect twice the velocity from the object going sideways. Now, in gravity, I could expect it to go four times higher because gravity is a constant force, and you're going to collect it proportional to your mass. Okay, and so it's, there's no force you're fighting when you go horizontally. So there's no defect created by um, the fact that you're fighting a force. Uh, so it's a more pure representation of what you should expect in terms of your velocity. So all of this is just so underdeveloped. I mean, there's no, you can't go to a Faraday or you can't go to a Newton or you can't go to any of these people and find where they did any extensive um, research uh, and explanation of function. So it's kind of just in the mush of physics. So it's sort of in the 1800s is where they were doing more and more of these mechanical experiments. Um, and it seems clear that the only ones they paid any attention to were the ones that confirmed their theory rather than any of the ones that made it look ridiculous. And frankly, simple things like this make the theory ridiculous. I mean, one plus one cannot possibly equal four. It has to only equal two. Um, so it, uh, you know, it's again, it's, I can go back to the very beginning. It's 9.8 meters per second, okay? And when you drop something from four times the height, all you're doing is doubling the time it's in the sec, it's in, in, the, in the gravity. So it's clearly a time dependent force, all right? Just because it's four times the height doesn't mean it's four units of force. It's only two units that you're in the gravity and versus the one. It's only twice the energy used to fight the gravity and only twice the energy you're going to get back from the gravity. So it's twice the time, it's only twice the velocity, and it's clearly twice the weight. And that's the truth. So, um, you know, the four is just an illusion. And again, I've talked about rolling things in that also has been under analyzed by physics all of it has been i mean something as simple as rolling something on a surface and physics has failed to um, properly acknowledge that the flat surface is just like one of galileo's ramps a flat surface is just a ramp with a zero pitch <laughs> and the ramp works by the rule that something goes half its speed, okay, going up a ramp, it goes half its speed three quarters of the way up the ramp. And going down the ramp, it reaches half its velocity at uh, way up here. And is that right? No, it re reaches half the velocity here. Um, so that's what needs to be understood is that it's not in the middle where it should be if it was linear. And it's not linear. Um, right, so on a ground surface, four times the distance, 
something will roll four times the distance that only has twice the velocity but it only rolls four times the distance because it's really not uh, meeting the same force the same friction force isn't being applied the faster it goes it's only this is one unit of time 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 obviously when it's still going fast it covers distance very quickly it's only being pushed into the surface for uh, a very small amount of time per foot where as it starts to slow down it's in the gravity longer and longer per foot and it's smashed into the ground more per foot all right so that's probably enough for a first video try to keep them short a little longer than the short videos um, but um, lots of interesting facts in physics that physics hasn't paid any attention to hasn't had any curiosity <laughs> and uh, to their discredit again to the discredit of science.